All right. Well, thank you all for joining us today. We have an amazing topic ahead of us. We're going to be discussing how AI can, can improve your marketing. I'm, I'm hearing some feedback. I'm sorry. Let me just shut down my. Uh... For those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. This is a series of meetups and webinars that we do here at VBout. It's part of a growing community we've been harvesting for the past eight years. A few are part of our meetup group. Thank you, you don't need to do anything. But if you'd like to join our Facebook group, which gives you exclusive access to latest releases, videos, tutorials, and even deals like access to add-ons and stuff, please join our Facebook group. I'll have George with me today and Elsa, who will be assisting by sending you some URLs to content, pages, and resources that are quite important for you. By joining our Facebook group, not only you will support our community, I also will take part of um, all the conversations that take place, including direct feedback and access to myself and my dev team. Um, George, please drop in a link in the chat for those of you who just attended. Now, if you don't know who I am, I'm gonna introduce myself and my company real quick. My name is Richard. I founded VBout in 2014. And since then we'll be building the technology, focusing primarily on the marketing stack of things. We empower you and the marketers, the agencies to generate leads, nurture the leads and retain those customers once you convert them all in one solid stack. So if you would compare us to like a HubSpot marketing cloud, active campaign, SharpSpring, um, if you think about HubSpot as an overkill and then MailChimp as an underkill, we are right in between those two. And what we focus on is the marketing automation uh, layer of things. So we let you automate a lot of stuff from email chunking to SMS, email, and follow-ups, exactly what I was showing uh, John a few minutes earlier. So automation is the core of our technology, and we built so much for you to execute pretty much like the big guys on whether you're an e-commerce company, whether you're an agency, uh, you're service-based, your SaaS company, we pretty much cover everything that you need to run great marketing automation sequences. We also built VBout to be as simple as it can be within the stack experience. Now, some of you might say, I work with a simpler landing page builder or I work with a simpler email marketing tool. I know you can. However, the level of feature that we provide, features that we provide within the interface and how everything talk to each other we made it very simple to learn and master within a very short, short period of time. We also provide the stack at a great price. We're not the cheapest, we're not the most expensive, extremely affordable for the beginning agency or client or the marketing team that's on a budget. So you don't have to shell out a house uh, mortgage payment so you can uh, use our stack. We also provide premium support, some of the best support in the industry. Uh, and it's a human support that answers you and help you get from point A to point B uh, without waiting for days and days. I literally today got a response from a company that I submitted an urgent ticket about 10 days earlier, which is very um, painful for companies who want instant responses and they need help on the spot. Okay. Now, all of these are powered, or our core technology is also powered by engines that we're building for AI, predictive modeling, predictive analytics. So this makes us qualified right here to discuss the topic of marketing and AI. We were also able to secure VBout some of the top positions on the market, whether it's G2 Crowd, GetApp, Captera. A lot of, a lot of you, thankfully, have provided some great feedback on their experience with VBout. And amongst 350 products on the market, targeting the stack experience, we secured one of the top 10. So really proud of this, given that we are still a baby company, small company. <clears throat> In terms of what the product does, we, we have a lot of features we cover. Obviously, I won't have the time to cover them all today, 
but we allow you to one capture leads through our landing pages and forms and you can build those funnels so you can start getting people through your ads through your offer through your promotions we let you also build automation sequences using drag and drop interface which i showed you earlier and finally we have retention tools like email marketing social media lead scoring deep analytics and tracking and much more okay many of you already use viva so you know more of the features this is not going to be about teaching you how to use it however part of the presentation today is showing you the ai and predictive capabilities inside the system i will also share with you what's planned ahead and what you can expect as a partner of ours as a platform um, advocate uh, so you know exactly where we're headed in the next year to come all right before we start again those of you who just joined us welcome we'd love to have you be part of our facebook group george who is with me is going to drop in uh, a link to our facebook group so you can join us i would love to take any questions at any given time feel free to answer them uh, ask them right here via the QA section or via the live chat if you are on Facebook. I will do my best to answer all the questions unless they are troubleshooting, which obviously I will leave to the end if I have a little bit of time. We should be done probably by six o'clock today. And all the content of this presentation, including the slides, the recording, will also be resent um, to you via email. George usually emails everybody in a day or so, all that awesome content. You can repurpose this presentation and share it with your community, run it as your own event. We give you full permission to do so. We've developed these slides, obviously ourselves, and we'd love for you to partake in this. And this is something that we do as a partner to Vivout. We empower you not only with our platform, not only with our support, but also we'd like to give you the content required for you to run your events successfully. Um, all we ask for is perhaps some uh, credits at the end of it. Um, and we'd love to do events together if you have a thriving community as well. Now, yes, if you'd like to, yes, George. Sorry, can you give me access to be able to send to everyone? Because right now I can send to host and ping list. Oh, the chat. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. This is one of those uh, things we I keep forgetting to fix. Exactly. All right. So now I think it should be um, it should be good, George. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Michael. You will be given access to the slides. Again, you can repurpose them. Slap your logo on there. Just give us some credit at the end of the day. That would be great. Um, any Q and A's? I think I answered all the Q and A's, so we are good to go. Please give us your thirty minutes, thirty minutes of your time. I'd love to um, really tap, tap uh, to answer all your questions. Um, your your participation is highly encouraged, and I like to keep these as a roundtable, so I'm not just speaking solo here. And the topic for uh, today is really dear to me because we've been investing the last two years at Vivout to learn, understand all the data that comes into us. Because we are a multi-channel technology, we capture so much information that we have tested and failed and then rebuilt a lot of the algorithms to be able to give you good decision-making uh, options. Um, so with that, I have, I would say, enough knowledge to talk about the topic for today, uh, but also I would love your feedback. So let's talk about AI in general, you know, how AI can improve your marketing. These are the three topics I'll cover for today. Why is it important? I'll share with you some charts and facts as of today. Uh, application in AI. So I'll give you some solid applications that are starting to produce results. And finally, what are the AI features in VBOT? What's already launched and what's, uh, what's planned ahead as well? So why AI is important, and I just want to, you know, to take a quick pause here to understand a little bit what AI means in the eye of a lot of people. Some people don't know the difference between AI and predictive marketing uh, or machine learning um, or language processing, big data. If I am to summarize all of this, I would say it's the combination of, 
But the AI is the process of making machines smarter so they could make better, faster, and more accurate decisions on our behalf in the future. It's almost also in the predictive uh, field, taking past data and past analytics, studying them, analyzing them to be able to predict the future. Because a lot of the stuff we do, believe it or not, are based on predictive behaviors. So think about those two as making machines smarter so they can empower us in the future. And I, I'm sure that most of you today have used at least, at least on average, about 10 different things that includes AI and predictive. For example, Google Maps, uh, Siri, or Alexa. Uh, perhaps you have used uh, Netflix, or you went to YouTube and you saw a recommended video on the right side. I can guarantee everybody who is with us today have ingested some sort of an AI algorithm uh, through the websites and the places that they visit. So some of the top five outcomes of AI based on charts um, that we gathered, this one is from PwC. AI helps create better customer experiences. And I gave the example of Netflix recommending some movies or some series that are um, important to you. Or if I'm watching some AI videos and presentations on YouTube, I'm gonna get a series of recommendations on the right side. And what about when I go to Amazon and I, they recommend product that they think are relevant to me? It works really well because I keep buying. So creating better user experiences is um, really important. And it accounts you know, from an adoption perspective, 86% uh, more benefits to companies who have fully embraced AI versus companies who have semi-adopted AI. Decision-making is all also important because we can all now understand the past and predict, predict the likeliness of somebody buying something in the future to a certain degree of accuracy. We can help decision-making by suggesting things at the right time. You can also innovate on product and services by getting direct feedback, understanding the usage of a product, the purchases and the e-commerce experience. You can literally now use that rich data and pass it through an AI, an AI engine to really have a direct feedback on what's working, what can be improved upon and so on. AI can, imp can improve also on cost savings. And I'll give you a quick example. Imagine you want to understand the sentiment of your, um, or you have millions of followers on Twitter and you're getting probably about 100,000 mentions a day, or let's, let's just take 10,000 mentions a day. Now for you to sift through 10,000 mentions, it takes a lot of human power, but what about detecting uh, the sentiment of those uh, uh, tweets or mentions and understanding which ones your support team or your reputation team need to be focused on. This is one simple application that could save you a lot of manual work, which eventually uh, gets to cost savings. And at the end, it can make your team more productive. One simple problem that marketing and sales have is delivering the proper lead at the right time. Now, there are lots of technologies that were built like predictive analytics, uh, I'm sorry, like uh, lead scoring, but lead scoring does not always do the best job. It lacks a little bit of a deeper analysis and predictions. So delivering the right lead to your salespeople, especially if you're a high volume top of the funnel company, is gonna help productivity a lot. So these are some of the applications or some of the top five outcomes that companies have embraced so far when it comes to AI. And this is not only marketing. I gave you marketing examples, but this is across the gamut because you also have um, AI in security products. You have AI in uh, customer um, management, or if you want in support. So it goes way beyond just the marketing application. In terms of um, also revenue from AI products. So in 2016, the spend on marketing, uh, I'm sorry, on AI products, or, or okay, the remove marketing from that sentence was 357, 360 million in, in 2016. It's projected to hit $32 billion by 2025. And I've read different uh, charts. Some of them are estimated to hit 50 billion. Um, but Statista was the most, I would say, uh, the one that I found the most credible. 
So I would average it about to about $35 billion adoption by 2025, okay? Spend is huge. That creates an opportunity and that tells you that it is working for a lot of companies. Now, the curve that usually happen in adoption is AI had a lot of hype in the last few years. A lot of companies uh, try to adopt it and failed. A lot of companies built products around AI and failed. But now we've seen that wave come back with more mature engines, third-party plugins that allows us to do these things with a much higher accuracy. All right, let's zone in now on, on the chart. That's the last chart uh, when it comes to adoption in AI and how marketers, successful CMOs, and some of the you know, 500, uh, Fortune 500 companies are adopting it. 56% are using it heavily for personalizing content, understandably so. We want to deliver the right content to the right people at the right time that's relevant to them and based on their interest. It's easy to do it when you have 100 people in your database. It's a challenge to do it when you have millions of people in your database. So with that, content personalization and AI helps a lot with that problem. Predictive analytics is the second one. We love predict predictions and we have built a cool feature in VBOT that we recently released that's a predictive sending. We'll talk about that in a later slide. Targeting decisions. You know, who to take from a huge database and target. So if the AI is able to determine that your top buyers are, for example, execs or um, the chief security officers that uh, joined companies in the last five months, they have a propensity to buy much higher in adopting the technologies. Now the AI engine engine will zone in on a database that will include decision makers that just or recently have switched jobs in the last five months because the engine will know decision making is done at that point. That's one simple example. Customer segmentation, huge. You want to be able to have so much data and for your, for your segments to be properly um, built out as a, as a persona. Programmatic advertising and buying, obviously this is a big segment. I estimated higher adoption or higher number for this, um, but serving ads with the right variation in the ad set and the copy, et cetera, still a little challenging. A lot of companies are dumping money into this type of technologies nowadays. The rest of the stuff is um, improving marketing ROI through marketing content and timing. I would say this is highly related to marketing automation. Conversational AI through chatbots. Uh, what's the next best, best offer? Upselling, cross-selling, augmented reality and virtual reality. You will see this in the next few years also augment because a lot of brands are actually investing building technologies in virtual realities. Um, autonomous object systems, IOTs, these are um, still a very smart segment. Facial recognition and biometrics, okay? I'm pretty sure you might find more. If you have any additionals to add to the year here, please drop them in the chat. I would love to hear from you um, if you have additional ideas to this. Cool. Any questions so far, George? I don't see anything on my side. How about you? <clears throat> no, Richard, all good. Uh, now uh, we have questions from Omar. What, where would autonomous images land? Uh, what do you mean by autonomous images? Um, and I'm sorry, Omar, if I am not aware of this terminology. Auto generated images like Dell.e. Like what, George? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Auto generated images. Uh, like... Dell, D A L N dash E. Auto generated images. How about I, I'm going to allow you to speak, um, Omar? Are you comfortable if I give you uh, mic controls? Okay, just one moment. We have 45 people. Thank you, everybody who joined us. Omar. All right, Omar, here you go. Hi, thank you for taking my question. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, I was asking where in this list would uh, the images land, uh, like DAL E, which is basically you give it a prompt and it'll generate an image for you using AI. Like it's backward from, like if you give it, if I know AI exists where you give it an image and it'll give you a caption, but now the new AI is you give it a caption 
and it's going to actually generate an image for you. I don't know if you've heard about this. Um, it probably is just a small segment of what we're talking here, maybe in the content recommendation. I would assume that could be uh, that could be part of it in optimizing marketing content, timing, um, or content personalization, perhaps. Because it's not relevant in on its own, right? Like, uh, what's what's the benefit for me just generating a random image out of something? But what if I know the sentiment of 10,000 people in my database and I know one of the images to be the header of my email to be based on the sentiment of these people. So perhaps that's a good context for it. Is that right, Omar, do you think? Yeah, that sounds good. But also maybe like blog blogs where you want to, instead of going for stock images, you can just put the, your own generated images and you never have to pay for stock images after that. That's a good idea. <laughs> um, Yes, I would, I would say that's one application as well. Obviously, there are so many engines like Amazon. Uh, they have some great uh, photo detection tools. And um, Splash, I think. Uh, I, I think they got bought up by um, Canva, and if I'm not mistaken. And they could, they could do some of that, that cool stuff. Any other engines that you know about that does uh, image-generated, um, auto-generated images? I work with uh, Starry Eye. I just got accepted to the beta for DALL-E, which I think is the, at the forefront. Uh, I have a friend that works with another gen, uh, engine. I just don't remember what, what it's called, but it's the main competitor for DALL-E. Got it. Uh, you can drop in those that information in the chat if you don't mind so people can check them out. I really appreciate that. Mid-Journey, I'm sorry. Mid-Journey is the other one. Okay. I'll write them down. Cool. Thanks, Omar. Yep. All right, so I have a few more um, here. It says, uh, Michael uh, said, I have seen AI being used in biohacking. Um, sure. I think biohacking, for those of you who don't know, you can use uh, some bio kits that you order at home and you can create your own bio. Like maybe you can make a fish glow in the dark or you can make a dog's tail purple um, or maybe you can make small microorganism uh, under the microscope just change shape. Something like this, Michael, right? I'm pretty sure biohacking is huge. I'm part of a few communities that talk about biohacking. And some of it is literally hacking your own brain by taking certain substances as well. So it's a very broad term, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, sure. <clears throat> All right. Um, Jasper.ai, yes, Mike. Um, Jasper is good. I think we have also within Vbout now an email AI tool, which I'll share with you, that writes email content for you. So that's a new feature that we released. I'm, I'm spoiling my, uh, my stuff here, but uh, worth, worth dropping that, that in here. Um, cool. All right, so let's continue, guys. I appreciate all the questions. Actually, I had one more chart, look at this. All right, so in terms of um, the breakdown, this is actually, an aggregate, uh, but if I am to unpack this by industry, uh, you can see the content personalization is primarily for um, a B2B products win on augmented reality, virtual reality, and facial recognition. Uh, B2B services, 62% on content personalization. B2C products, 61% on customer segmentation. So the adoption of AI helped them a lot in that section. And four and forty-two percent on programmatic advertising. Um, last B two C, you see right here what wins the predictive analytics and customer insights, targeting decisions. Programmatic advertising is huge as well, uh, and improving ROI through better content delivery. So by industry, it just unpacks that chart behind. It. All right. No more charts, prompts. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about a few applications in AI. And of course, I'm not gonna be able to talk about a lot of them, but these are the applications, especially marketing, that have brought forth some great results for a lot of companies, okay? Um, and I'll start with more effective segmentation. Now, what a segmentation means, I believe most of you know, but to put it together is just take your entire database of targets, segments, and slice them up to personas based on behaviors such as demographic behavior, geographic behavior, um, psychographic, firmographic. So what company they work for, how much revenue they, they make, what kind of purchases they had, their credit history, 
uh, they own a home or they own a Toyota versus a Mercedes. So you can take all of these. And if you have the proper enrichment product, you can build an AI engine that automatically segments these uh, buckets for you. Uh, so you can target them with better content. So marketing segmentation, I think, is um, really important for any industry. I've seen it done at the large scale of millions if you're on B2C uh, consumer products. And I've, done, I've seen it done at a more like a, uh, an A to B kind of account-based marketing approach if you are a hardcore B2B product. Um, so with AI, you can zone in on those personas. You can build better segmentation because AI allows you to enrich your data and also choose the proper um, segmentation metrics. So for example, um, if the, the data set that's buying from you are highly likely um, females between the age of 30 and 35 for Q1, maybe that could change right in Q2 and the demographic can, can perhaps become a slightly different. So that ever evolving segment is what we refer to as an AI powered uh, segment. Otherwise segmentation could, could stay stale and it will be the same segment until you refresh it and there's some manual work involved there. Okay. Psychographic are things like their interest, they, uh, um, behavior, uh, if they uh, have a positive feedback and comments online. Uh, and obviously uh, it involves things like if they're interested in sports, what kind of hobbies, um, so you can get really deep in that target segmentation, okay? So that's one of the first application of AI that we've seen firsthand bring some good results. And earlier I gave the example of finding, let's say decision makers uh, are those who are just hired, who were just hired in the last five months, they make the best decisions. So now you have the ability to target them at, at a bigger scale. Uh, I'm sorry, at a targeted scale. <clears throat> All right, any questions on this? I see a few here, let's see. No, Richard, almost. All good. Uh, cool. No questions. All right, the second one, which honestly I did not expect until, until George um, gave me this and um, I did my research on it, but in SEO, there are lots of um, progress in the use of AI. And I'll give you an example. Maybe this complements a little bit Omar's point. But part of optimizing SEO is the ability to uh, create your own, I would say, um, data chart or data schema, articles linking to each other. Uh, you have uh, some sort of a schematic tree uh, of, of your pages and of your um, high performing, uh, let's say, features pages versus your blog pages the images and the use of tags. So all of these combined can optimize your SEO. It's such a hard work that there are now plugins that make some of those optimization on your behalf by identifying, let's say the article that you're writing can link um, or should be linked to, uh, from article A to article W because there are some relationship between those two. So it takes language processing and learning in order for the schema or this information flow uh, to work really well. Um, and uh, obviously not only it optimizes your article quality, but it also helps Google and search engines um, find you based on better terms and better quality of content overall, right? So there are some tools that provide you with, uh, with the AI um, power stuff. So let me just, I think I have on my notes a couple. I've seen uh, Word Lift, WooRank. These are a couple of products that are worth mentioning. So I'll put them in the chat. Uh, Word Lift and WooRank. SEO is a big topic. Sometimes you need one or two people dedicated to SEO on your team. If you have a very large library of content and copy and constantly optimizing in a very heavy environment, um, and say environment, I mean the web, there's an abundance of pretty much everything out there. So now Google is, has shifted a lot of the algorithm from, they had a priority uh, a while back on content, then uh, content quality and length and keywords. 
then they moved to mobile friendly and mobile first. And now they move to AI first. So if you have some engines that are constantly updating all your content based on the data you add, I think that's going to help you with your SEO tools overall based on our initial research. Um, George, anything you'd like to add to this? Um, actually, what you mentioned is uh, correct, of course. I was going to say that, yes, before, when you want to search on Google for, let's say, as you see, you're seeing here in the image, like gray, Sony, or the gray console developed by Sony, before SEO used to try to analyze each keyword by itself. But later on, based on the previous search results that uh, SEO, uh, that Google actually analyzed, they try to show similar results for uh, what someone may search for, uh, which is similar to the previous search term. Uh, so Sorry. for example, so, yeah, so yeah. It's swapping around the word console for developed or, or swapping certain words around does not necessarily impact the results before it used to, but now uh, the AI engine will help kind of guide that this is a slightly different search but it could lead to the same results, something like that? Yes, if they, for example, in the ne next search, they search for something alternative to Sony, not necessarily Sony, mm -hmm. uh, it will show uh, advanced search based on the, the previous search for, from other people in the past. So it's right. uh, like a machine learning, it learns uh, how to show advanced uh, search results. Got it. Thank you, George. Any questions on this? I read one. Uh, Patrick asked, I need SEO and copywriting. Is this going to help me to get where I need to be with my content creation? Um, I'm not sure if you're asking the question um, right, uh, Patrick. I think you need content just like everybody. You know, you don't have a website that does not have content. So having solid content strategy is your first step. Um, and not the other way around. So to say that SEO is going to help you with your content is probably not the way to ask it, unless I misunderstood you. <clears throat> but definitely, if you have the right content developed, that's solid quality, you can add a lot of SEO tactics to it and perhaps use some of the plugins you suggested to add that AI um, on top of it to help you link as you grow your information schema. Uh, Michael uh, Almaraz is asking QB, is there a way to copy your links from Zoom into a Word doc? Thanks. Uh, George, do you think we can attach, um, upload the chat to like a Dropbox and add it to the email follow-up? Uh, honestly, I haven't tried it yet, but what, what we used to do is uh, try to attach the transcript, the entire okay. transcript of the, of the meeting. Got it. Um, all right, we can, we can do that. I'll download the transcript and I'll give it to you, George. Perhaps you can add it in the email. So if you guys haven't signed up to the email, George, uh, you can give them a prompt or they can become part of it. Um, that would be great. Okay. I don't know if it's the newsletter sign up or something like that. Yeah, they could sign up uh, so they could get an update of this content. All right, moving on to number three, uh, smarter content generation. I love this. We built something in VBOT, which I will show you in a minute. Um, and it relates to some of the stuff that uh, I, Michael just asked, which is how you can generate content if you, I would say you're limited on some knowledge and perhaps your grammar is not that strong. So there are some engines right now, Jasper is one of them. VBOT started already providing some email copy based on very basic input, um, but you can start to generate content from its base structure that you can develop on. I personally don't think AI is all the way there to write up a full on article that's copy paste. I really feel like to have the quality that you need and not just to slap co content, right? That's not gonna get you there. You definitely need to add your own personality to it, have the right content, have a strategy behind it. Sure, you can use AI to get started. Sure, it's a great shortcut that saves you time, but at the end of the day, you need to add your own uh, structure to it. 
Um, some easy way to use content generation AI is you can create a landing page based on um, some input. So you can write up a whole copy. Uh, that's coming soon in VBout. So if you run out of ideas and you don't know what to write, we ask you a couple of questions and then we generate a page for you. Um, social media posts as well. If you're running out of ideas for Twitter or Facebook, you can let an AI just create a tweet or a Facebook post. And obviously when it comes to email, everybody writes them. Uh, a lot of you are looking for inspiration. We do have in VBout a whole on library that um, are inspirations from brands. If you are looking for like email cadence for the e-commerce abandoned cart, for cancellation email, uh, your, website is, uh, your website is offline for some reason. We, ha we have like a hundred plus templates that George has curated. But what we recently added is the ability for you to have AI-based generated content. I'm gonna demo this uh, in a minute, you guys. Any questions, by the way, on this? Uh, we have a question from Patrick. Uh, he said that he needs SEO uh, and copywriting. And is this gonna help him get to where he needs to be? I answered uh, this, George. Um, I think I think I think you're 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 two steps behind. Uh, I got this one off, so we're good. Um, I am at Patrick. It says I create courses, one-on-one -on -one coaching, affiliate marketing. Yeah, solid content. He was hoping this might help me go to market correctly via Google on rank higher than competitors. He, I would like to have a copy written with few keywords or my original content to be worded as fresh look. Um, okay, this is a very long input. I'm sorry, Patrick, I'm trying to summarize it. So Patrick is wondering, he has a coaching and affiliate marketing business, and he was hoping that, that content generation through AI can help him. Um, so I'm assuming, yes, you can use some of the products out there that writes article for you, but you need to add your own personality to it. Otherwise it might be a little bit too generic. And sometimes I've seen small mistakes here and there, or even some outdated information because the AI engine is ever learning. So if you're talking about a specific topics, let's say sports, sports is really ever evolving. So if the, the database or the AI engine that let's say Jasper uses um, is relying on open AI and a specific version of it, it might have a cutoff of 2019. So you might not be able to get latest sports predictions uh, or who won 2021 basketball championship, for example. So you just have to be careful about these things and the type of industry um, that you're using. But again, double, double proof and so on. <clears throat> um, all right. Moving on to target product recommendation. Everybody have seen this, whether it's Netflix, uh, whether it's Amazon, um, or whether it is your... I don't know, Audible playbook, uh, which uh, is Amazon at the end of the day. Uh, product recommendations are huge to understand that you like drama, that you like uh, you know, PG-13 type movies or whatever. All these recommendations are, are based on machine learning. In VBout, we even built uh, our own e-commerce recommendation engine based on what you have in your cart and based on what other people have purchased when they, in the past, and they have similar items in your cart. Very, very small engine that literally just takes all your e-commerce purchases, analyzes it, um, and then analyzes everybody else that resemble it so we can make product suggestions. It's a nice little widget. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of people use it, which I would love to, but uh, you can really literally recommend e-commerce products in VBOT's email marketing tool not on the website, in email marketing based on purchases. So the more you feed VBOT purchases, the more, uh, the smarter this widget will get. Okay, this is very basic uh, targeted product recommendations. <clears throat> um, and uh, AI, AI right here in Netflix is, is one example. Anybody would like to add to this? Do you know a product that you're really in love with that's using AI successfully to suggest things for you? And obviously, I mean, Facebook does a great job with ads, Instagram, um, Google, uh, but any products that are not quite that popular yet that you can recommend. Goodreads, okay. 
TikTok feed. I mean, yeah, TikTok, TikTok feed can get addictive. So the, the longer you, you watch, right? When you stop the scroll, that's actually a metric that they log. So they know exactly what you're looking at. That's why sometimes you might get recommended things that you don't like because you watch something you didn't like and you spend enough time on it uh, that they they're suggesting something similar. <clears throat> All right, um, cool. All right, so we talk, let's talk about customer retention here and how AI is being used um, in customer retention. Obviously, nobody wants to lose customers. So, you know, the ability to, I would say, predict who is not using your product or who is using your product in a certain cadence that ultimately leads to a churn. Um, so we'll give you an example. If uh, some of our churn clients on VBout stop logging into the system every 30 days, we know that's, that's a, um, a churn pattern. Um, some products might rely on more login. Maybe, maybe your, your product requires a login um, more often. You know, like if you are using WhatsApp, most likely if you're not logging in every other day or so, you're not an active user. Um, so every product and every target segment might differ in this uh, prediction, but being able to learn from these patterns and identify those who are likely to churn maybe allows you to retarget them with an offer or have somebody reach out to understand why they're not uh, logging in as much or they're not um, kind of getting engaged in, in your features and stuff like that. Right. But not only this, you can also understand uh, people's usage of your product and suggest additional features to them. So if somebody is using and I think HubSpot does this well. If someone starts to grow their database and you, uh, you have some sales, they might suggest some add-ons for you. That's gonna help you um, maybe create some better sales reporting, right? Um, so not only the lack of behavior to predict churn, but also existing customers and be able to upsell them on additional products. Um, that's, I'm giving a B, B to, um, B2B kind of B2C SaaS products, but that could apply for uh, general business. You know, if you are, let's say a local brick and mortar and the average consumer comes to you at least once every two weeks, let's say you're uh, in a uh, clothing store, there, there might be some pattern there that you can extrapolate um, behavior from. Um, so ultimately, Understanding user patterns will help you with customer retention. It takes a lot to acquire a client nowadays. Regardless what industry you're in, it's a lot of effort, whether it's writing content, spending money on ads, doing um, promotions, and building your brand. It takes a lot, right? So when you get a customer, trying to retain those customers um, definitely helps. And it's cheaper to upsell an existing client than to get a new one. So. AI and customer retention is a great um, is a great area. All right, a couple of questions, I believe, or feedback. Uh, all right, so um, um, Michael, I'm gonna Patrick, I'm sorry, I'm gonna come back to you. Michael's saying TikTok has become a problem. I might need rehab. Okay, I think a lot of people who use it might need it. You have to just know when to shut it down. <laughs> Apple Watch will, will match what you want with your pulse and other things to get you excited. Okay, sure. Peter Burson is saying, everybody recommend a platform like Hulu, Amazon, use AI, absolutely, for doing some suggestions. Um, and TikTok has been asking, Patrick's asking, TikTok has been asking me to promote my posts and dropping my view rates by 85%. Um, it's becoming a social media platform. I'm pretty sure they need to monetize. I mean, they've done great already, right? I forgot what their growth was like $19 billion last year or something like this. So they need to sell more at the end of the day to be able to build that empire. <clears throat> uh, all right. So Patrick asked, I want my own personality in there, the control with an easy to use UI. 
I am in the wealth and fitness dating advice niche. Vivat sounds very nice. I want to do targeted products as well. I've been doing this stuff since 2006 and AI is completely new to me. Copy that AI is great. And Canva has a cool new price picture feature and Snapchat. So that's good stuff, Patrick. This is, I think, more like a comment. Um, I think just understanding, don't feel the pressure to go out there and use something that has AI. Just understanding what's available to you is important and leveraging existing tools in the right way. So perhaps when I show you some application of Viva, you'll get an idea of what you can use today, right? Just using our platform. All right, customer facial recognition. I'm included this even though on the usage adoption side is a very niche, but cameras can detect obviously your face uh, in a very high accuracy. Whether this was pioneered by uh, casino security companies or whether it's, it was pioneered by Facebook who can detect facial recognition up to 98%, which is insane. Um, they could detect not only who you are, but probably within high accuracy, um, your gender, your race, um, ethnicity, you know, your, obviously your height, um, and a lot, of, a lot of things about you straight from doing facial uh, detection. Now, from an AI marketing perspective, maybe that's an e-commerce play, where based on that facial recognition, you can recommend specific type of products, um, or perhaps uh, you can just identify pictures that will mean or resonate with that particular person. Right, so if you're Middle Eastern, perhaps seeing people sitting around the table eating Middle Eastern food uh, will have a better connection than that email campaign you're running, right? So these are small things. And again, right now, nowadays, if you have an email being pushed to your database, I can somehow get your picture through an enrichment product. I can analyze your picture to determine some of the stuff like ethnicity. And if you're using an email engine or some, some image um, image platform, which um, I think Omar suggested earlier, perhaps you can have that header have a smart um, picture that's related to that particular uh, person, related in the, in the context, of course. All right. So, you know, these are some of the applications for facial recognition. I haven't seen it a lot outside the scope of, let's say, airport and casinos and few shopping stores who are, have been testing it. Does, anybody, does anyone have experience with this um, or have worked with products that do facial recognitions and have done it pretty well? No, all good. Get nine new messages. So facial recognition is huge, guys. I think uh, it's gonna emerge more and is gonna get more adopted based on this content personalization uh, stuff. But um, yeah, it's one of those that worth looking into. <clears throat> All right, few other feedback here. Uh, Burson said, check out freewater.io using ads to distribute few products. Will work uh, with AI on future advanced vendor machines. Sure. So Peter put in the link in the chat. And by the way, um, I'll just give you an example, not only of facial recognition, but image uh, and, and object detection. Uh, this company, which uh, I'll give you the link for in a second, uh, does, does gift giving, right? Um, gift giving, meaning you can literally build a whole sequence of automation. And at the end, instead of sending email, you're gonna send a snail mail with a gift. It could be a bottle of wine, it could be uh, an invitation to a football match or a ticket to a football match, whatever. Um, so this company has done a great job in doing image detection. And based on that, that will suggest one of the ideas or, or the gifts to that particular person. And I think it's called Alice. Um, Alice.com, I'll put that in the chat. So if you are into gift giving as part of your marketing journey. I think uh, they have a program where you can upload an image or um, if you can get some details about the people you're targeting via enrichment, via social media or others, they will automatically uh, 
try to identify objects in those pictures. Let's say I was at a football match and that will send a ticket for to a football match or a voucher to buy a ticket in a football match, but they will personalize it in that context. Um, so that's one example for you guys. <clears throat> cool. All right, and I think I have um, a couple more here. Chatbot, another great application, you guys. Chatbot is not only support, which can help a lot, by the way, on support side, by alleviating a lot of the uh, heavy lifting. If you have thousands and thousands of requests a day, you might want to kind of weed them down to only those who really need direct help. So smart chatbots have become really efficient. But let's talk in the marketing and sales kind of process. Um, obviously, you can automate conversations and hellos based on interests. So if somebody comes into your website and let's say you identify their intent because you're doing predictive lead scoring, you understand their pattern, what they purchased, perhaps the chat can reduce a certain question according to that interest. So automating conversations based on interest is a huge area in, in live chat. Appointment booking. You can have a full-on conversation with a bot that understands your intent, one, and suggests some times for, for you to book and talk to a success manager. Um, so smarter booking. And a lot of companies at high scale who have adopted this process have seen some great results. And finally, you can do some lead routing um, based on sales reps best performance. Or you can, yeah, if you understand that the person that just filled out the scheduling request is, let's say, within a specific geography, um, now it's time to run that, the route that lead to a specific person in the company so they could be the one to talk to them. So sales routing is also an area that works really well. Um, and within the smart chat bot context, I think this is one great application for marketing and sales. <clears throat> All right, I have a slew of questions here. Uh, let's see. We have, uh, Patrick says, this is what I need. Cool. Um, okay, uh, Michael is asking, Richard, I have to run. I look forward for your information. Sure, no, no worries, we'll send, we'll send that details. Uh, thank you for attending. And a couple of you had dropped off. Um, Omar said, thank you for some of our user engagement. I need to step away. No worries, guys. If you need to go, we got your back. We'll send you this presentation uh, after. I still have one, one part for today's content, which is what we've launched on VBout and what is yet to come. So the first thing that we launched is our subject line analysis. So we are, we are constantly analyzing subject lines from hundreds of thousands of campaigns to be able to tell you what should be included there so you can drive better open rates. Open rates are impacted heavily nowadays by bots, which we are slowly weeding out through our own algorithms, uh, but also by engagement. So we have a nice tool as you're typing in your subject line, it appears on the top right corner. You can see right here <clears throat> some suggestions, for instance, how long your subject line should be, the character count, if you have good or bad words in there, and we can you can hover over some of the stuff. If it includes emoji, a number, a short code to personalize it, and have trigger words. So this is a great tool that we added um, earlier this year that allows you to use that subject line analysis uh, tool to write better subject lines to drive open rates. So this is based on machine learning. We're learning from previous campaigns behaviors, so we can um, suggest some improvement on existing ones. All right, the second feature, which I really love, and uh, today I got the latest results on this um, from my team. Predictive sending is being able to send your contacts email at their own time based on where we know they perform best. So this requires a little bit of history on your account. You need to be um, active and have sent approximately 10 campaigns for us to build that learning um, profile on each of your contacts in the database. And after that, we can tell that person X is best um, opens their email Sunday afternoon. 
So we know when to deliver the email to person X if you're using this option. This feature is so good. The average open rate across all the industries was gravitating around 13%. Um, but the average for those who started using predictive sending is around 27%. So that's a huge increase in open rates just by adopting this feature. Now, the only thing you need to know about predictive sending is you cannot be really uh, strapped on sending the email today because the algorithm might have seven days worth of profile send, right? So if you have some time to execute predictive sending campaigns, let's say seven days, um, that would be perfect. Or if it's five days, you can still use it, but have a cutoff date, which we allow you to do in VBout, where you can say the due date of this campaign has to be by you know, the end of this month. You cannot go beyond that. So we have some tools. We took those into consideration. You can certainly use this on your account. If you don't have this feature installed on yours, it is a paid add-on. But because you joined us today, and I always do this because you invested your time attending, I'm happy to install it on your account at no additional cost. All you got to do, just drop in your email in the chat directly to George, uh, the email associated with your VBot account, and we will install this add-on for you, okay? It's a really amazing tool, you guys. I did not expect, you know, we kind of expected some boost about 5 to 8%. But to, to get to like 14% boost in the average open rates is, is really good. And it's still in the beginning phases of learning as well. All right. All right, let's see in the chat right here. Uh, George, please take note of all the emails. Um, I'll also download this and give it to you later so we can install the predictive add-on on our partners here. Cool. 12, 13%, it was 12 point something to 27% average. Exactly, Patrick. So it's really good. Um, now it's going to fluctuate. Not all industries are the same. We take an average of a whole. Um, so some might be even more, some might be slightly less. I highly encourage you to use it, but you need to have a history on your account, of course. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, we can certainly do a trial, Patrick. Um, just I know I'm saying this uh, right now, uh, which is having built some campaigns in the past for your subs. So if you want to trial it for a month, you need to send at least 10 campaigns, right? For the engine to, uh, to work well. Um, okay, so the predictive sending feature is inside VBout's email engine. So if you are using VBout, we have this option on the first step of creating a campaign. You choose the process, which is predictive and uh, you're good to go, just like you do any campaign, right? You do A-B testing, you can do chunk sending, another great feature. And the predictive, it just lets you set up when to start the campaign, when is the due date, and let Viva decide when to deliver it for you, okay? Awesome. All right, another email um, AI feature, AI powered by OpenAI, is the ability to create um, content, because a lot of you, just like me, okay, maybe don't have the time um, or proper inspiration all the time to be coming up with emails on the go. I usually put so much effort, I have to do research, I have to look up what other company did, it's just something that I do. But now we created an engine, it asks you what type of email you want, and this is all inside Viva to you guys, it's on our email, um, legacy email builder. So you choose the input. Um, you want a welcome email, you want an announcement, you want an event. So I think we have about 15 to 20 templates just for uh, per an intent. You just fill in the service name and briefly describe your, your stuff and we automatically generate certain types of variations for you. You can see the variations right here. So if you want three different variation of this, just choose three and the system will suggest three copies for you, okay? I always say, please, make edits and personalize this to your own. It's a great starting point. It's using OpenAI to create these copies. Um, and you can give us feedback and save them for the future use as well. This is based on a credit system. Um, George, also please install for those who shared the emails, this add-on on their account, um, so they could have it and they could use it and give us some direct feedback. Um, 
those of you who are watching this event, I'm sorry, we have very limited amount of these to give out. So if you're watching us today and you've dropped your email in the chat, George will be able to install it. Otherwise, perhaps on an upcoming event, I'm happy to, um, to offer something additional as well. George, you have something to say? No, thank you. Uh, so I'm registering the, the emails. Yeah, I'm going to download the chat for you so you'll have all those records as well. All right. Awesome. All right. So what's upcoming that's already being worked on and internally building algorithm for uh, social content generation. We're trying to build the proper algorithm for creating social media posts, sentiment analysis and social media to give you a general sentiment analysis on your social connected to Facebook to Vivout. Uh, positive, negative, neutral, uh, emotion detection, if it's happy, if it's mad, if it's sad, if it's angry, um, basic stuff, but helps you at scale to understand how your audience is perceiving your posts, what's working best. For example, maybe your sad posts are generating the most positive response, or maybe your jokes posts are generating the, the most negative responses. So these are the type of things we'll want to display to you in the future. Landing page content generation works very much like the email, credit-based. You give us some hints what you want and we generate copy for your landing page. And also enrichment and meta profiles to be able to enrich one contact based on the email to give you dozens of additional data metrics. It's something that we are experimenting with. Now, what we are ambitiously looking to build next year is a social posting recommendation uh, for time, lead churn prediction, lead conversion prediction, predictive automation. This might be pushed a little bit earlier to be able to kind of predict the time on automation to send out a specific email. Smarter segmentation, which also might be pushed in after we do enrichment and dynamic pricing for products. This is pending heavy testing, but maybe we can change the prices of products on your site or within your e-commerce uh, environment um, based on the time and the person, okay? This one is very ambitious by the end of next year, but it's something that uh, my team has built some uh, basic uh, tests for. All right, this is it, you guys. I wanna thank everybody who joined us today. If you are using VBout already, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. My team and I are here for you to assist you with your marketing journey. If you haven't used VBout and you're interested in a demo, whether you're a marketing team, or you're an agency. We built VBout heavily um, rich features for agencies. So request a demo from our team, mention this event, and mention that you came through our meetup. Uh, my team will take care of you. They will give you a walkthrough, we'll understand your need. And according to it, we will um, see if we're a good fit or if we're not. Uh, George will put in a link in the chat so you guys can um, book a demo directly with our sales team. And just mention us, I'll make sure to tell the team to expect a few demos after this call. And that's, uh, that's about it. I'll take any final questions. <clears throat> All right, so Peter's asking what about hashtag analysis and how many users send it? Seems like a lot of products to do not have it. Um, we do have a hashtag tracking, Peter, so that's a good question. Uh, we'll see if there's something that could be done around hashtags, hashtag and uh, sentiment analysis. Sure. All right, a few more questions here. Floyd is saying, I have VBOT for some month, but I'm just ready to start using it. Why should I go first? Um, Floyd, I think the best thing to do is to attend our onboarding, uh, daily onboarding webinars. You should have a link on your... Um, Live on the top right corner, there's a, there's a little help section. If you click it, you'll see a link to our daily onboarding. It's an evergreen webinar. I walk you through the entire training. Um, but also, I have academy.vbout.com. You can learn the product in depth on your own terms. Okay. Sign up. There are three courses. One of them is the VBA certification. Uh, you can use that. And if you need access to other courses, we are happy to give them to you at no cost. Okay. Christian is asking, where is the VBOT roadmap? Uh, Elsa is putting in the chat. Thank you, Elsa. Um, and by the way, the roadmap changes a lot. 
based on um, feedback and, and things that we are able to push based on other things we built. So for example, sentiment analysis uh, might trigger something very related to it because we enhance this, the sentiment analysis on our subject lines. So some of these things can evolve and also based on your outvote. Thank you, John. Yes, indeed, there are great courses and you can definitely leverage them. Um, cool, George, any questions on social? On, yeah, there are some emails on social media, George, so please take those and, and, and add them to your list, yeah? On uh, Facebook. Yes, yes, uh, yes, no, don't worry. Facebook also will save the these emails. You can review them. Awesome. Uh, Brian is asking, how does um, affect our monthly costs? There's, there's, uh, the add-ons that we're going to install will not affect your, uh, your monthly costs. We're literally giving you like $100 worth of monthly add-on, $100 a month at no additional cost just for being on this event. So thank you for participating. I appreciate your time and you being here, just supporting us, asking questions. It means a lot to us, Brian. So this will not affect your uh, monthly costs whatsoever. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <clears throat> cool. Well, I want to thank everybody again for joining us today. We will have another meetup next month. I believe next month we're going to talk about um, online reviews, online reviews and reputation, how it takes place in the, in the customer journey. We are going to have a partner, um, iBird, Bird's Eye. Um, many of you might have heard of them. On, on that event. So really excited about it, great content, how you can use reviews in the customer journey to uh, enhance conversions. Um, so be on the lookout for the invite. We do it on the second Wednesday of every month and we will have our guests from Bird's Eye talking about this stuff. So bring on your questions, see how you can fit that new feature in an agency offering or in your company's uh, strategy. And um, if you're a partner of us uh, in terms of an agency or a reseller, We'll have our partner meeting at the end of this month. So thank you again, and, everybody. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, and Esteban, and, it doesn't uh, matter your plan. You, you'll get you'll get that feature, those features because you are on, on this call. These are premium add-ons for everybody. Uh, and because you're on the call, you'll get them at no additional cost. Cool. Yes, and uh, Patrick is asking if there's any way to connect even uh, not only during meetup. And of course, Patrick, you can reach out to us anytime either to me, George at Vivaut, which I will write the email, or Rich at Vivaut, or feel free even to, uh, to book a demo, whatever, whatever it's suitable for you. Sure, I'm happy to answer some questions. I, I'm not gonna do demos, you guys, but happy to route you to somebody who will. But if you have general questions or you want feedback uh, on some things, I'm happy to uh, assist by, uh, by all means um, and invite conversations all the time. So thank you, everybody. I really appreciate you. I appreciate this community that's growing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next, uh, next month. Thank you. Thank you, guys.